Howdy. Um, we are back in action here. I've got a little study bunny behind me. Um, <laughs> we are on section 7C, uh, talking about energy and chemical reactions. We'll work on your homework. All right, the objectives of this lesson, um, hopefully we will answer these questions. How does energy change during a chemical reaction? Can energy be created or destroyed? And that was it. This is kind of a quick down and dirty lesson. Um, we'll be talking about a whole lot of new concepts. Um, so it shouldn't take too long to discuss this. <clears throat> this is a picture of a rusting truck. A lot of times when people think about chemical reactions, they think of explosions, things that happen quickly. So things that happen at a quick reaction rate. So this is talking about the energy change um, this chemical reaction takes place over a long period of time versus like a firework, which happens almost in instantaneously. So the energy in a firework is released immediately, whereas the energy change that happens over time when this truck is rusting is very, very slow. Um, energy is stored in the chemical bonds that form between atoms. So when they form bond, it stores the energy in there, all right? So to cause a chemical reaction to continue, those bonds have to break. So you need to have energy to be able to break those bonds and enough energy to reform new bonds. And when those bonds are um, reformed afterwards in products, they actually release additional energy. So that balance between energy that's, that's absorbed in a reaction and energy that's released um, is what we're going to be talking about today. It determines whether a reaction is endothermic or exothermic. So do chemical reactions always give off energy? No, not necessarily. Every chemical reaction requires energy, but not all release energy, okay? All right, so this is an example of a combustion type of reaction, something that is giving off heat, um, energy in the form of heat and light. An exothermic reaction um, is another way to say this. An exothermic reaction is a chemical reaction that releases more energy than it absorbs. All right, an example of this is combustion. Not right now. Get a different pencil. Thank you. All right, so that's an exothermic reaction, whereas an endothermic reaction is the opposite. It's a chemical reaction that absorbs more thermal energy than it releases. An example of this is photosynthesis. So I take the energy from the sun and... Um, the form of heat, light, radiation, and that is, it causes chemical reactions, whereas that energy is then stored as sugar. All right. If you've ever seen a roller coaster or been on one, you know that that first initial hill is usually the tallest, and that's because the roller coaster needs to build up enough energy to get through the rest of the track. The same is true for chemical reactions. Um, the energy that's required for a chemical reaction to occur is called its activation energy. So it's a minimum threshold of energy that has to be reached in order for that chemical reaction to even start, in order for those chemical bonds to break and reform new bonds. This is a diagram of an exothermic reaction. So you can see here that we've got energy on our y-axis and a reaction progress on our x-axis. Need to go work on homework, please, Eleanor. So first we have the energy level of the reactants, right? And then you have the activation energy, the energy required to even start the reaction. And then once the reaction occurs, these products have a lot less energy than the reactants did. So what happens to that energy? Does it just disappear? Absolutely not. It just changes forms. It's released into the environment that surrounds the reaction. So in the case of a combustion reaction, when it releases light and heat, that light and heat is absorbed into the environment that's around it. So think about a campfire. You're sitting around a campfire, you're watching a combustion reaction happen right in front of you, and you warm your hands by the heat, the energy that is given off by that reaction. That's an exothermic reaction. There's a picture of a bonfire, which is an exothermic reaction. All combustion reactions are exothermic.
All right, that is a quick simulation of what happens uh, in an exothermic reaction. All right, so you have energy that's required to break these atoms apart from each other because these are bonded together. So you need energy to break those bonds. And that is the activation energy. All right, and when these bonds form, they give off, when these bonds reform in the products, they actually give off more energy than was needed in the reactants. In endothermic reaction, you can see the energy level of the reactants is lower than that of the products. Okay, so you still have that activation energy that's required, but the products store energy, they absorb the energy. Again, this example is photosynthesis. That's an endothermic reaction. The energy is stored, the energy was transformed from energy from the sun, radiation energy, um, and it was transformed into energy in glucose, or sugar. All right, you can see that a lot of energy was required to break these initial bonds in an endothermic reaction, um, but not as much energy was released when the bonds were reformed in the product. So that's classified as an endothermic reaction. Next, is energy ever destroyed? I hinted at this before. Energy is never destroyed or created. Um, it only changes forms. So this is known as the law of conservation of energy, also known as the first law of thermodynamics. Here's an example of that. So you have radiation or energy from the sun, and that is converted into energy in a fruit using the process of photosynthesis. Um, and then that fruit, um, the energy from the fruit, the sugar, is um, transformed by processing the orange, um, and all that energy remains in the orange juice which is then consumed by somebody who is going to go exercise. So that energy is transformed into ATP. Um, you'll learn that when you take biology. Um, and that ATP is used to um, make her muscles function. And then when she uses up all that ATP, um, it's released as heat, all right? That's why your body sweats when you're exercising because it's releasing heat. So then that heat goes into the atmosphere and it's, transforms in a many, many different other ways. So again, that is the law of conservation of energy. Just, yeah, just hang on. Decline, okay. Again, the law of conservation of energy states that energy cannot be created or destroyed, but only transformed, or I'm sorry, transferred between object or transformed. Again, also known as the law of, the first law of thermodynamics. We'll talk about this more when we cover thermodynamics in physics. All right, let's go over these review questions and then we'll be done. So a reaction whose products have more energy than its reactants is a, an endothermic reaction. The products have more energy than the reactants. Is combustion a type of exothermic or endothermic reaction? A combustion reaction is always exothermic. It always gives off more energy than it is absorbed. What is activation energy? Activation energy is the amount of energy required to even start a chemical reaction. All right, A is the energy of the reactants, uh, B is the energy of the products, and C is your activation energy. Does the graph represent an exothermic or endothermic reaction? Well, let's look at it. We have the energy level of the reactants, the energy level of the products. So energy was lost to the surroundings during this reaction. So our products have less energy than our reactants did. So it is an exothermic reaction. What must be true about the energy released by an exothermic reaction and the energy remaining in the products according to the law of conservation of energy? This is a little bit, uh, the wording's a little bit wonky. All right, so again, they together the energy from the reactants plus the energy um, that is required to start the reaction must equal um, the energy that's released and the energy in the products, okay? So enter again, because it can't be created or destroyed, it just changes forms. So um, we have to make sure that the energy at the beginning of the uh, reaction is the same as what's at the end, not 
what's stored in the bonds or what's stored in the um, reactants and products, but total energy input equals total energy output. And that is all I have for you.